Heat take game one against the New York Knicks. Panthers eliminate the Boston Bruins. I was doing some good grief listening on the way in today, dude. On WEI. I fired up that W. They are miserable up there. This is the greatest choke in the history of New England sports. I was like, oh. <laughs> it was so good. There's nothing like a good grief listen. I mean, 3-1, and you've scored more points and have more wins than any team in the history of the NHL. But again, we went through this. Hockey. We are right. Like, and, 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 and I don't know why everybody is so shocked that something like this will happen when in that sport, it's really not that uncommon. Coming back from 3-1, yes, that is uncommon. But an eight beating a one or or a lower seed beating a higher seed in hockey, no. Yeah, but forget cardiac cats. Like, they were, like, raised from the dead cats. It was amazing. Like, third period down in in the last two games? Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Yeah. I will apologize to Paul Maurice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I made fun of your glasses. Sorry that I doubted you. I did, I did like the term 2-1 filthy. I, I, I did like that. <laughs> but, no, oh, I was wrong. The guy, the guy, you know, said that he wanted them to play a tougher style, and uh, they brought it. They brought it in the toughest way, and they they eliminated a team with with uh, experience, with some killers, a team that was unstoppable on the power play. I mean, every time, every time it was, which, you know, that's the thing that's crazy about this. Those referees, so crooked. I'll say it again, just like I did in the Buck series, because I'm not complaining. I'm I'm doing a spo. I'm not complaining. I'm just pointing it out. You guys were crooked, and you fell for every flop that they put out there. Okay? Yeah. You guys wanted Boston in the next round. I understand why. You know, original, whatever the hell, six they are. But, nah. The Cats, too much. <laughs> unless th- unless those refs are going to play goalie. Oof. <laughs> but. But, uh. Let, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 Vlad. What's up? What's up? What's up, What's up? How so, are so, you? So, so, let me ask. See. Because a lot of swagger last week, yeah, well, and still have it. How, really? How, yeah. How we? Feel? So, so you think it's no? Can it? Can I give you some information, oh, some ahead. facts, go ahead. and see if it kind of tapers your enthusiasm a little bit? It won't. Go ahead. Though. Okay. The Knicks are zero and seven in series that they lose the first game at home. Okay. History. All right. I'll tell you the thing that was crazy to me, to be honest with you, with yesterday. And this is the trouble with having Stephen A. Smith on the broadcast. He's, like, yeah. he's going to do his thing. But they go to halftime. The Heat are down five. They shot 38% from the field. What right. was he saying? And he's like, we're in a great spot. I told you we were going to slow down this team. I'm like, you, dude, you're up five. No, we were up double digits. And then Jimmy and the guys cut it to five. Yeah, and then we... that's bad. That's what I just said. They, right. were, they so were, were up just, five. Yeah, yeah. He, they were up five, and he's like, he's doing the shit. We're in a good spot. That, that game, I was that like, game looked like it was going to, they had blowout written all over it. it they should have been blowing the right. out. And, that's and then I was thinking, man, the Heat aren't making any shots. And they're within like 10, 15. I said, if they start shooting the ball just average, it's over. It was, uh, it was just, here's the thing that's been great about it is, you had yesterday, the two vets really swung the game. I mean, Jimmy was his thing. He and he had a and Jimmy was great. We'll get to his injury in a second, obviously, mm-hmm. which is a concern. But you know, it wasn't that killer lighting up every jump shot that he was doing. Like he was getting. He had a, a regular working man's day. Yeah, working man's day <laughs> was getting to those easy spots. Like they he, for all those that talk of oh they're gonna double him and just, like, dude okay Jimmy Butler like you think he's never seen doubles he's actually he's, he's think... actually one of the best players that I've seen either going on the attack when the double's coming or getting the ball to the open guy I just found it I just found like it to be a hilarious thing where you're like Tibbs is gonna make adjustments I'm like okay like and, and you don't think Jimmy Butler's ever seen adjustments in his entire basketball career but the thing that was great about it yesterday was you had a performance in that third quarter by Kevin Love. Love, love, my guy. Love, Always love. loved him. <laughs> That's my guy. I, I, listen, I used to make fun of that outlet pass all because, man, did they fawn over it on those broadcasts back in those Cavs days. Oh, the Wes Unseld story. Heard it a thousand times. 
Man, when he's wearing it on that heat jersey. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that guy's wait. money. But you don't think that's a little fraudulent? Man, I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Hard to say. What I know it is. I mean, that pass. How about Jimmy going up and get it? Make it, make it uh, whoever was guarding him look tiny. He was, uh, he's a wide receiver, baby. That's what he says. Best hands in the league. He said right. that, he said that for years. Jimmy Butler, best hands in the league, you know? And Kevin Love was just, he was zinging it. It was, it was beautiful. He, he started hitting threes, easy buckets. And then those passes, Win. those, those three Win. outlet passes were pew, 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 money. And that really swung the game. I mean, that's, that's I think that what, completely swung the game to the Heat's control. I think what really swung the game is in the heck, the second half when the Heat said, if you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us with jump shots. We ain't letting you in the paint no more. Oh, yeah, it was much. It was, <laughs> it was a parade of the paint. The we first. were killing like, you guys are, in the paint. What are we doing? We were killing you guys in the paint. And then they had Spo on the sideline talking about, you know, like, stop we, allowing us to go in the paint. And we all knew, of a sudden, we knew down, what they, we go. We know who they are. Yeah. Why so they hit a so three shocked? for nothing. Right. But that's, but, but again, and you know why the Heat should be so familiar with this, Vlad? Because early on in the year, when they couldn't hit the broadside of a, a barn, right, every team was daring them to shoot. And Spo was yelling, keep shooting. And they would struggle against a lot of teams who got high from three because they couldn't get in the paint and they weren't making threes. So it, it didn't matter who they played. If a team got hot shooting the three, they had no chance because they weren't making them. Yeah, but how about the New York Knicks getting defensively shut down by Kyle Lowry? Yeah, come on, dude. <laughs> hey, he was out there like a uh, swiper. That dude, that dude was like swiper, the swiper, and door to explore. Nonstop. He said, uh, you listen, he said, Jedi mind, big brother thing on Villanova. By, know what by the way, you were wrong. What'd I do? For sending that picture. What, which one? That Jimmy Butler. No, dude. Jimmy <laughs> Butler was wrong for that. Wait, Jimmy like, Butler. So he's limping. He can barely walk. Mm -hmm. The game is going on. He got time. Well, he's not doing well, He puts him on after the game. It's not, it's not like he's live IGing. A couple of things happened yesterday in regards to Kyle Lowry. First of all, he was awesome. All right. Vet savvy. So look, they have these two guys in Kevin Love and Kyle Lowry. They are the champions on the team. And yesterday, it was Kevin in the third quarter. It was Kyle in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. You know, they were huge. They were huge in every every single way. But a couple of things happened with Kyle Lowry's tush yesterday. One of them being he landed in the lap of, of course, famed singer of Tyler Hero, Jack Harlow, landed in his lap. And Jack Harlow posted on social media. Which <laughs> very this, is, That's, this, is the worst. this is worse than Jimmy. He posted, Kyle Lowry just took a fadeaway three and landed in my lap. The rumors are true. That bleep was like a pillow. <laughs> dude, 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 like, I mean, like, wow. Yep. How like, do you respond to that? You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. You, you just, don't. You just. They had words. They had words. I mean. And then Jimmy, who does his post game montage on Instagram, which is where. He puts all of his teammates doing some cool stuff. For Kyle Lowry, he just puts his butt. Like, like which I'm just like, what are we doing? What are we I doing? Mean, We're just I, having fun, baby. I will say of all the basketball players out there, Kyle does look the thickest. Of course. <laughs> it's known. It's a known thing. He's got hip pads in. That's what Tim Hardaway says. I don't know. Nah, I ain't a hip pad. That's not what Jack Carlo said. It's natural. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't know. That's natural BBL. But <laughs> so my question to you, Vlad, is this. If we take away the paint and dare you to shoot the three, we gotta hit them. That's it. They gotta. It's right. been I mean, that's been like that's the thing. Is like it, it's been a tough go with them shooting. Definitely can relate to that. That's been a thing. Um, you know, they didn't have Randall yesterday, but Toppin was good. You know, so, uh, and and guess what? Toppin is more athletic than Randall. Yes. So when you're talking about, you see him jump up and block a couple of shots and stuff like that. Randall ain't doing that, especially on a bum bum leg, right? But if the only thing that Randall can bring you is what pain points as well. 
You think that? I mean, he can. I mean, we've seen too. He can. He, he can. He can, shoot, he, so he, can he can light it up. He can hit it from. He can light it up from outside. And he can bring us. Bring, I, I, to be honest so, with you, seeing how athletic Obi Toppin was, I would take my chances with Rand. I wouldn't because I think to, I think Spo would make top and do things that he's not ready to do right now his game is very limited very limited as talented as he as he is it's either three-pointer or alley-oop or cut to the basket for a dunk it was listen spo out coach sibs as always that was it that's just that's what he look spo, that's what he did spoken spo now yes yesterday moves up to fifth all time in postseason wins the dude's a marvel um i i do think it's been great over these last i, I do think the jimmy butler era has also lent to spo getting the respect he's deserved because everybody's kind of looked at him as, oh, he was the guy who had the big three. And now he's a guy who just takes all these undrafted guys and all these casts offs, and he just puts them in these positions to execute. And I think that's been the thing. And you mentioned a little bit about this with the closeout is like, they just seem to have somebody else step up in every single one of these moments. And man, Caleb Martin, what a demon. I mean, this guy just continues to I just wreak take, havoc all over the place. I would take Caleb Martin and 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 um, Gabe, Vincent. Gabe Vincent and I would like whatever you want because the energy is especially Martin the energy that he plays with with that athletic ability and ability to get to the rim shoot the three and the stones that Gabe has the other thing is I don't even know does he have a player option next year because I feel like if I was him I would like can he or did he just sign up a straight two year deal? Because I would be worried that he's going to get a lot of money. Here's here's the other thing though. I sent the I sent the text in the group chat. I'm like, this Gabe Vincent is a nuisance. Pain, yes. <laughs> he's right. Which is wait, wait. He does that all the time. Who's the leader though? Kyle Lowry. Mm -hmm. So all the little point guards are. I mean, but Caleb's under the contract next year. He's a player option his third year, which he'll obviously okay. opt out of. He's making six million next year. Oh, wow. this guy. I mean, he, that block that he had, yeah. beautiful. I mean, they showed a picture of uh, of uh, Duncan Robinson shooting over Obi Toppin, who, and it, you saw how high Obi Toppin got and how he had to shoot that ball. And I'm mm -hmm. like, how did they ever make shots? It's crazy. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> that, that, well, that, that goes back to that Caleb Martin three over Giannis. Right. It just goes in his face. Right. What a beautiful day. It this is, is how it looks after two weeks. This is how it looks after, after you. 305, 954. The Panthers. Yeah, the Panthers. I didn't even imagine the Marlins swept this weekend. Marlins swept Chicago Cubs this weekend. Three into Miami one. Into Miami one? Into Miami wow. one. Yeah. Well, now we're talking. What was how, it? That was that the first time in seven games? First time in seven I was games. A, I was on, uh, uh, I was on uh, listening to it in the car. Were you? Yeah. The Com Brinks. Campana scored twice. Wow. A All brace. Right. Oh, look at you. Look at yeah. that. He had a right. brace. How about that? So uh so we had uh, nothing but a winning weekend down here. Yeah. Fantastic. And yeah. uh they just asked it on uh on on uh Sports Center just now, Leroy, and that is the question I want to ask you. Uh Jimmy Buckets does uh hurt the ankle yesterday. Five minutes <sighs> left in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Knicks fans are pissed uh about the <laughs> about Tom Thibodeau not going at Jimmy Butler because he literally couldn't move, he was just in the corner. Just standing he, he, there. Here, here's what I would say. He can move more than you think. That's what I thought. Too. Well, here's the thing that I'd be no, scared no. of, and I think Tom Thibodeau probably is too. That dude's so good at stealing the basketball. Like, if you're going to sleep on him at all or think you're getting a wounded Jimmy Butler, I wouldn't go at him either. I would take it, my chances with, here. With, with Kyle Lowry, even though he was swipe or no swipey yesterday. There, there's a difference in being banged up and hurt. If you're hurt, you can't go. If you're banged up, it's more of a how much of this can I take? Um, if you tweak something, the worst thing you could do is go sit mm -hmm. if you can move. And I think having Jimmy out there to move around in any capacity will help in the long run because the second he gets off of it, it's gonna start throbbing. Right. So you gotta keep you gotta keep it moving if it's just soreness. Um but they showed him walking in the tunnel after the game, and he was he was okay. He was walking decent. He uh, apparently it was reported that he has an ankle the size of a baseball. That's what the reporters in the locker room were saying, uh, who were there. But I don't know. Like they're asking the question: Do you sit him 
Because here's the thing. Game three is not till Saturday afternoon. Ridiculous three days off. It's a crazy. Yeah, I don't know what the schedule is. And you know why Saturday afternoon, right? So uh, that they could get the Lakers Warriors Saturday night. That originally was supposed to be a Saturday night game. Uh, I could actually. Listen, Lakers Warriors is going to be a huge yeah. rating. Um, I actually can understand that. But it is a long, long break. And so <laughs> if you sit him, he's essentially getting a week off. But we did just see this. That, that's what we I'm just getting. saw this with hey, the Bucks. That's what I'm getting at. Bucks got cute. You Bucks got cute, and let the let the Heat get on good some momentum. You think the Bucks got cute, or his uh, back was really hurting? I think his back was. I think I, I think, think it was think hurting, he, but I thought I think Game Three he could have played. But I think, I think this. Got cute. I think this. Glad. Here's what I think. I think after they won the second game, they tried to squeeze a little more time out of Giannis. And they got ran over. Because I, I <laughs> mistake. Yeah. yeah. That's I think, what I'm saying. So, so after just going through that with another team, it's like we can't prove it. But I think what they thought was, okay, we got game two. Sure we can. Wars, we, so we just saw we could beat without Giannis. But and it, so I think they probably thought, look, maybe we go up 2-1. But without Giannis, there's a difference though, Tobin. Hmm? You guys stole home court with getting, winning game one. I understand, they but, would, I, but they I, would have had to go into Miami and I get really it. think that they can win a game in Miami. Totally true. Without Giannis, that's totally. Diff- it was a difference. Scenario. Totally true. But I still think that they had an arrogance. That there was an error. Okay. At I, worst, we're gonna go. We could we could is, split these two in Miami, and then we'll be. A, we, they thought they could get one in Miami no matter what. So they, but then well, bad bad thinking by. I Milwaukee think Bucks. I can't yeah. prove it. Bad and here's so now. Here, here's my thing. You gonna follow up and do the same thing? Now I will say this: if he's hurt, I don't want him out there hobbling, right? Because then the injury lingers, especially with an ankle. Then it lingers, and now you're fighting a sore ankle for however long the series lasts. But if he can go, and then you say no, we're gonna squeeze another, try to get another few days out of it to make sure you're a hundred percent. No. You know what, the, I, I, you know what, Tobin, I back you up on that, and I, 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 because you know what, Knicks fans will be thinking the same thing if they had won Game One. They would have said maybe sit Julius out and not play him until Game Three because of the hour. That would so no. there would have been a sense of arrogance. Don't I, say, I don't look, think I don't the think heat, play around the heat of already with your right. food. I definitely don't get play it. With That's your food. right. I think That's right. this is how I felt with the Bucks series. I felt like, and the reason I didn't overreact to them losing Game Two the way they did, which was in a historic fashion, <laughs> they gave 138 points in that Game Two. But it didn't matter because you did what you were supposed to do. But and I I kept getting on you for saying that. I understand, but it's true. Right. But this is it just it felt different because I and I mean this with respect, Vlad. The Bucks are a different juggernaut. And that's just it, like it just feels like, man, if you could take if you can go up 2 0 on the Knicks, that feels like a death blow. Game two is the most critical game, is the most important game for the Knicks this season. For sure. You can't go down if you 0 2 with three days off. And that New York media on your noggin talking about it. It's are you going to get speci- swept? Especially with how well everybody on the Heat is playing. Did you guys like though? Did you like all the nostalgia yesterday? Because it was the thirty. Uh, it was a twenty-five year anniversary of the Jeff Van Gundy on on Zoe's leg, which was pretty cool. That, it, that series started. To me, would have really been funny. Van Gundy if, did if the Van Gundy would have went. I don't know. How did, that, how did they blow that? No, because. They, Disney in love with don't, Steph. They don't want that. They want no. Listen, I don't understand. Here's the thing: Mark Jones does the Kings games. So yep. Mark Jones and Doris Burke were in L.A. doing the Lakers Grizzly game, Game Six. They could have easily gone down the coast. Yeah, it's weird to do Golden. So State. Mark Jones, so Breen ends up doing the non Knicks game, and Jones ends up doing the non Kings game. That is a little bit. That's weird. That's a little bit weird. That is a little bit weird. Because, I mean, I guess they just want to. Is that like just we don't want, blatantly want to put it out there that we have each home broadcaster doing each game, but. Breen's a pro. Like, I don't really ever feel like like Breen is ever rooting for the Knicks, even though I know that he loves the Knicks. But, we, we heard him when Julius Randle hit that crazy shot this year. He went double bang. But, but it would have been great to have Van Gundy there and you have I Zoe know. there. And Dude, when Zoe, they, well, that's the thing. Like, you had Zoe, you had Ewing, and man, Zoe. I mean, he was so happy. Oh, like, yeah. when you see the Zoe fist. Yeah. He, he even... Like, he even throws the Zoe, fist. I mean, like... Zoe, look, dude, Zoe does not put a lot of basketball stuff up on his Instagram. And even Zoe is like, I can't wait for Heat Knicks. I actually went to practice on Saturday, and I asked uh, I asked Jimmy about this. And Jimmy's like, look, we don't need any extra hype. But Spo was like, look, I don't think it matters to our guys in the locker room. But you know. like it's everybody They weren't born when this rival. No, they, they maybe he said he goes, I think I was. They don't know. I I was three. But Josh Hart us? said 
It's everything. It's everything. It's all you everything. needed to do was look at all of the former players in the stadium. There was so many. <laughs> so so many. Many. <laughs> like, and they all had the sourpuss. They were all cheering. And all of a sudden, they're like, uh-oh. They, listen, if you can tell. What, so watching Zoe and Riles and, and, and Mrs. Riley there. and you Stark. Can, right. And then you saw Stark. You saw, you, like, Big Fella hasn't been in the building in a long time. So right. seeing Big Fella there was crazy, right? right? And you could tell it was just like they looking and it was like, you know, in their mind, they, they think they're playing, right? They like, do. Like, in their mind, they think this is game one of the whole series. It's crazy because I don't think people really understand. I can't really say from the Knicks perspective, but you can't, like, Riley still cares so much, dude. Like, I don't, like, I was at that Chicago game. I was obsessed with watching him. And uh, Chris Riley, his wife, doesn't sit with him for every game. Usually, it's just the contingent of it. She sat yeah. with him for the play-in, for the last play-in. Yeah. And you could just tell, once they knew they were going to make it, just the relief that was on his face. He's like, we're right. in. Right. And so, like, he, this guy is a shark. He cares so much. And now you put on top of it, sprinkle a little on this competition Sunday, Heat Knicks. Yeah, dude. They're, they're very excited to be in this series. Oh, my goodness. Look at the tight end the Jets drafted. Uh, yeah. The, what did they get? They got, they got that dude from... Uh... Zach Kunt. Yeah, yeah. That dude. Yeah, we talked about him. Dolphins didn't draft a tight end, by the way. Well, you drafted a tight end uh, slash wide receiver. Who? Oh, that from dude from Stanford? Stanford? Yeah. He was crying. So basically they drafted Mike Gusecki. A oh, black I version. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to act like I've ever watched him play. Right. I am excited that they took the dude who's the fastest running back in the, le- in the, in the draft, though. That excites me. A-Chain? From Texas A&M? <laughs> I actually knew him. I was like, no. oh, I know that name. No. Let me explain something to you. What? Okay. What? You don't have to be fast to play running back. No, but you dude. have you have to be quick. There's a big difference. I can't stand when everybody talks about how fast a running back is. If he can't get to the open field, it don't matter. And quickness is what gets you there. Mike, so, Mike McDaniel was very fired up. Like they go okay, to the video. Yeah, they go you to can the be video. fired. You they go to the video of him, and he was like, he was he was fist pumping. He was very well, excited. It's one of the few positions where they look at speed. But speed is not a priority. Speed is not a necessity to play running back. You go look at some of the times of, of, of some of the guys that lead the NFL and in, in, in running back stats and stuff like that. When you talk about Emmitt Smith, wasn't a burner, right? Marshall Falk, wasn't a burner, right? You have a lot of guys who had the skill, but one thing you can say, Mm-hmm. You look at Jerome Bettis, wasn't a burner, but he was quick for his size. He had quick feet. Early, and, early Jerome. Early Jerome. Before he got yeah, maybe the kid's the gonna be awesome. Like, what are you, what are you doing? I'm Just because saying, I'm not, I'm not saying that he's not gonna be good, but I'm saying if you're basing this based on how fast he is, that is a misnomer. I'm just telling you the fact he's the fastest running back in the draft. So, and that excited you. Well, <laughs> but that's okay. my point. That's what I'm trying to get you. I get, Levo, you're right. But you understand if you're if you're Tobin, you're a fan of the Dolphins, and you see that team with a lot of speed outside, and then you add another yeah. fast More running fast back. Speed. So I speed. was just trying to give an informative. I, no, I get you. You were uh, giving us an informative yeah, analysis, well, at, you know, analysis, analysis of the position. Of the position, what's, and, what's needed, what you got to look for. You, you know, this here's is what fan. Happens. It's fan bin. It's I, I fan do, Toby. I, I do a show with a knucklehead, right? <laughs> Which you didn't see the fist bump. No, from, uh, I'm going to show you the fist no, bump during no, the break of Mike no, McDaniel. The greatest. Listen, if everybody really needs to know who I do a show with, all you need to do is go find the Chris Fowler interview. Mm-hmm. And he said, did you do the research? He goes, no, I just threw up the U and came in with my swag. That's how I like to do it. Right? <laughs> so that's so. But I work with this dude every day. Mm -hmm. So I think, like, while I'm looking at stuff and trying to figure out, it it could be, like... Mike Kane's fandom is very much like uh, Nick's fandom. Like, that's what it is. It hasn't happened. Nothing's happened for 20 years. Yeah, but but, 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 but at least they make the playoffs. Good shot right there. It's true, though, dude. Listen, I I feel good for you. I'm telling you that. Like, my dear... I have dear friends who are Nick's fans. And I'm just, like, they're, like, they're, they're peacocking on me going to the series. I'm, like... I can't believe you guys are acting like this again. They when shouldn't be people. They have Jimmy mother bleeping Butler. Yeah, you got the best player in the He's series. He's the but like that wasn't the case last series. Well, yesterday. 
yesterday. You talking about last night? Yeah, Jimmy wasn't. Uh, Jimmy wasn't. Jimmy didn't have to be Jimmy. Jimmy was good. He was. Good. Jimmy he was, was really good. good. No, that listen, listen, Jimmy's line was amazing. But here, like, here's, here's, and that's that, amazing. Jimmy's here, Jimmy's line was great for not even playing really the last five minutes, just standing there. Here's the great thing. We didn't even attack here's the great him. thing about Jimmy. Tips. Jimmy's numbers are still better than most, and we call those numbers average. Well, it's like that's what that's what when you're good. <laughs> okay, right. okay. Here's an example. Everybody ripping Aaron Rodgers for his season last year, like for his numbers last year. Do you know if Aaron Rodgers was the quarterback of the Jets last season? Jets would have been in the playoffs. You know, Aaron Rodgers' worst season last year is 90% of the quarterbacks in the league's best numbers. I like right. how you're so Jimmy, So, Jimmy. <laughs> I, like wait, how, hey. I like how down 0-1 you're, like, already, you're already going to the glowing <laughs> light of Aaron Rodgers. Hey, no, 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 no. hey this is Tobin no, 101. No. Oh, listen. Move the ball. Oh, no, 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 no. no I mean, here, 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 here's another Tobin. Did you see Aaron yesterday at the Jets game? Oh, uh, you got no, the goosies? Aaron, oh, I was getting goosies. <laughs> oh, Aaron is ingratiating himself I'll with the you. New York media. No, he no, was no, at no, the no, Rangers no. game, game six. I'll tell you what gave me gooses yesterday. What's that? The D Wade, Jimmy Butler yeah. hug after, and he yeah. goes, "We're doing exactly what we talked about." And I was like, "Oh, thank you so much, Dwayne. We really owe him a lot." That guy got us. That guy got us. This guy. So, you, he, being the jazz owner doesn't bother you? Anymore. No, not okay. the least. He's already like he's already bragging about how much money he's Ooh, made because they went up and they went up in value. A smart play. I mean, did you see what the uh, the Bucks owner? What did he sell to, to Haslam? Twenty five percent of the team. He made three billion or something like that. Yeah. No, I thought Haslam bought the team. Yeah, Haslam bought the team, but the guy who sold he wasn't like he didn't own all of the Bucks. He only owned half of it. Yeah. So he sold it for six point something. So yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, and now he's out in the first round. <laughs> guy made out like a bandit. So no, the Jazz thing doesn't it doesn't bother me because, dude. First of all, that organization, they're they're run by Danny Ainge. I already know how Dwayne. How can you how can you work with that guy? I, he doesn't. He, he just does. shows up and he does handshakes and hugs. It's just like when Shaq owned the Kings. But like when it really comes down to it, when he shows up in that building for playoff games, he's still royalty. You know who he's rooting for. Like it, it, it's it's like it's you don't have to explain Dwayne Wade's ties to the Heat. It's already understood. Right. If you if you are really if you are a psycho and you're bothered by the jazz thing. You have to get your. You know what's crazy? Here's what's crazy. Why isn't it like that with the Bulls and Jordan? Uh, what do you mean? Just what I said. Like, ever since oh, Michael Jordan, it, ever it, since Michael Jordan left the Bulls, you did see that Hall of Fame speech, right? What? Michael Jordan? You did see that speech, right? No, where very he, petty. He went after. Uh, Dude, he he's, he did. Wait a minute. I mean, did you see the last Leroy, dance? I'm saying you did see the last dance. Yes, but ago. I'm saying no, they're not cool. No, that I get it. Not cool but, with anyone. But, but there was a point where D Wade wasn't cool with the Heat. Yeah, and then they had and a I think, and, I, and I think with him and Riley, it's always it'll always be a thing. But not him and Spo. Not him and not not him and, and the heirs. I don't think it's going to be like that. Jordan and him like and, Jerry Cross or Jerry Ryan's. Door. Nobody did. Okay, it's, so that's because not it, cool it, with him. look, look, the best players on this team. It's Jimmy. That's his friend, like legitimate friend. Bam out of bio, it's like his protege and UD. And UD. <laughs> like right. it's impossible. It would be insane. It's impossible to shake it. It's impossible. Right. It's impossible. And they look and they literally do have love for each other. So then therefore, when you have a genuine love, you can actually talk. And if you're open and let it, you know, apologize. I I guarantee you, Riley told D Wade, I apologize. I'm sorry. And Wade would be like, you know what? I, I understand now. But you also paid side. A, but you also paid us on white side the max. But you did, yeah. <laughs> and what did I? And what did I do? And then D Wade's like, and what did I do? I got you, Jimmy Butler, in return. But he came back though. I know he did. He's he the did best. come back, and that's why, like, when people say, "Oh, does it bother you that he's on the Jazz?" No, he got his Jimmy Butler, and he was the best player for two years on a minimum. You said you didn't like it. I when didn't. You... No, I didn't like him going to the Cavs. That really, uh, really. No, that, I'm saying that... when he was an owner. You go, why couldn't he be an owner for any? I just no. I was. I was just. I didn't understand why. Like the thing that really threw me with that was I'm way over Jesus. Um, the thing that really threw me with that was was Mickey's tweet about it. I was like, well, Mickey doesn't tweet about stuff like that. Right. That was weird. But like, no, I don't care. Like, go on the jazz, dude. That's fine. When when all the mo you know, is he taking selfies with Lori Marketing? No, he's taking selfies with Bam. You are way too petty. Goosey. He's just way too petty. Like his this dude goes through emotional roller coasters over anything that happens everywhere. 